Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Truly, indeed, God is good. Just giving thanks and praise to God for allowing us to wake and see another day. Amen. Amen. And as we, um, as we're gathered here this morning, just let us all give thanks and praise to God for what he has done in our lives. And also let us continually pray for each and one another. Uh, for truly, indeed, many are going through many struggles. And we just need to keep each other lifted up in prayer. Amen? Amen. But just a quick announcement before we get started um, in our praise and worship service, and we'll announce it again um, after service. Next Monday and two, next Monday and Wednesday, Sister Colleen Bailey will be here at the church giving out Easter speeches between five and six, between five and six. And that will be next Monday and next Wednesday. Um, she would be here giving out Easter speeches. And so just ask all our youth to get involved, um, and even some of us adults. Um, if you want to do your Easter speech from back years and years ago, you can do your Easter speech. Uh, I won't be doing mine, by the way, because I don't even remember it. And so truly indeed, God has been good. And let us all stand at this time for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. Psalms 46, verse 1. And the scripture reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and present help in trouble. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly fathers, we stand before you this morning. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise, O oh, Heavenly Father, for your mercy and for your grace. Father God, as we're here this day, God, we just stand before you, God, asking for forgiveness for our sins. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God, that you continue to lead God and direct us, God, according to your will. God, that we will be the Christians that you would have for us to be. And Father God, we pray for God for those that are not saved upon this day. God, those that are in need of your saving grace. God, we pray for those that are going through issues upon this day, O oh, Heavenly Father, through depression, through drug habits, O oh God, whatever they're dealing with. Father God, we just pray that you touch their minds, touch their hearts, be with their families, O oh God, and help them to overcome these addictions. And Father God, we pray for our nation this day, pray for our political leaders. God, we pray for the people in Ukraine, O oh Heavenly Father. Pray, God, that you continually work in their lives, O oh Heavenly Father, and that your will will be done. And Father God, we pray for God for those that have been affected by COVID, O oh Heavenly Father, and whatever God they're in need of this day, O oh Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless and meet those needs now. And God, we ask you to look down in our communities, look down over our spiritual leaders here at St. Paul, O oh Heavenly Father, and just guide us, O oh God, that we will be the ministry that you would have for us to be. And God, that people's lives will be touched and be changed, God, from your word. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things to be done. Amen. Now to be in the hands of our praise and worship leaders.
through. And we are witnesses that God is able to carry you through. What, what, listen, what would have killed other folk? What, what would have made other folks stay in the house and just turn their back on God? God carried you through. And that makes me know that whatever I'm going through right now, he said, come on and give it all some He said, we thank God this morning for the praise team. We thank God for our musicians, our drummers. Amen, amen. Brother BJ, you getting good and good. I know that's not proper English, but that's what my grandma used to say. It's just getting good and good. And I thank God for Brother L working with him and building up his confidence. Because there are some sons in my son, he had to work. Amen. He had to work. <laughs> Amen. He, he had an apartment. He had to work. <laughs> Amen. He stayed in Oxford, so he had to work. And so we thank God for him being here today, and we just thank God for the spirit that's in this place. Amen. That's a sweet spirit. Amen. In this place. Amen. I said there's a sweet spirit in this, in this place. And it looked like it just getting sweeter and sweeter. Amen. And this is the kind of atmosphere that the preacher loves. Amen. He loves it. And like you, you can almost just smell it. <laughs> There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Let me just share something with you. It's gonna get better. It's 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 gonna get better. It's gonna get it's gonna get better. I was I was talking this morning to the church there in Tupelo, an inspiration, and, I, and I'm learning that getting better has to start with me. Amen. My getting better is not that I'm going to get better tomorrow. I need to get better right now. Because, see, I'm, 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 I'm learning in my walk with Christ that my blessing is tied to you and your blessing is tied to me. You may, you may not believe that. You may not believe that. That's why we got to be more careful how we carry ourselves. Because I'm, I don't want to mess up your blessing. And I don't want you to mess up my blessing. That means we got to we gotta look out for each other. And, and that's what Paul tells us this morning in this pericope, in this passage in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. He listened to what he says. He said, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that, they, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts in the love of God and in the patient waiting for Christ. Notice here, Paul says, he says here in verse number one, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. I want to talk this morning, and I want to talk this morning and teach this morning. I want to talk about mutual prayer for difficult times. Mutual prayer for difficult times. 
Hezekiah Walker said it like this, I pray for you, you pray for me. We all are part of God's body. You are important to me because I need you to survive. Mutual prayer for difficult times. And I am a firm believer if there was ever a time where we were in difficult times, the time is now. Folk are having to pull up to the pump and decide how much to put in because I got to have something to put on my table. Folk are in the grocery store trying to look for cheat meat. There ain't no cheat meat no more. <laughs> All of it high. And that's why we need mutual prayer in these difficult times. This morning, my brothers and sisters, in this brief letter, that Paul writes to a young church at Thessalonica. Paul teaches about the last days or the end times. And the reason why Paul had to continue to teach this in 2 Thessalonians is because there was much confusion concerning the second coming of Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, around verse 13 through 18, Paul discusses the coming of the Lord to rapture the saints. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, around verse 1 through 11, Paul discusses the day of the Lord that will consummate all history. But even though Paul was trying to explain to them about the second coming, at the time of this text, there was still a lot of confusion that still remained. So the Bible lets us know that Paul writes the second letter to the church. In chapter 1, Paul again, he discusses the coming of the Lord. And then in chapter 2, he discusses the man of lawless, those out there that were still opposed Christ. But in chapter 3, he exhorts the church to live in light of what's going on around you. And my brothers and sisters, this morning, this is the pattern when the second coming is addressed. In other words, there is an explanation and then there's an exhortation. The New Testament is very emphatic that Jesus is coming again. Right. Let, let me say that again. Yes, the New Testament is very emphatic that Jesus is coming again. In other words, it lets us know that one day the Lord will return to this earth physically, majestically, and unexpectedly. But Christ's intimate return is not an excuse for you and I to disconnect from the real world and start living irresponsibly. In other words, the Bible says, listen to me, we are to live soberly, we are to live righteously, and we are to live godly in this present world. Why? Because we're looking for a blessed hope, a glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This letter this morning begins with the reality of the last days. But even though it begins with the reality of the last days, it begins also with the responsibility of the saints as we live in the last days. Because right here in the text, between these two sections, there is the resource the church can access until Christ's return. The resource that you and I have, somebody help me say it, is prayer. Somebody say prayer. Somebody say prayer. Paul understand because at the time of the text, 
Paul was having a difficult day in Corinth. And the saints were also having difficulties in Thessalonica. But Paul says, well, guess what? I know that there is a way that even though I'm in Corinth, even though you are in Thessalonica, Paul said there is a way that you and I can help each other. And I want to say this morning to somebody here that's sitting here this morning, that even though I'm there in Bellevue, Mississippi, you may be here in Amory, Mississippi. You may be there in Tupelo or in Oklahoma, Mississippi. There is a way that you and I can help each other. Y'all going to help me here. Well, what is it, preacher? Well, you pray for me, and guess what? I'm going to pray for you. I might not can be that witch, but guess what? My prayer can get through to God. Paul, understand this morning. And I need you to understand. That there is a dynamic power that works when a pastor and people pray for one another. Y'all yes, ain't hear me here. Yes, sir. There is a dynamic power when saints learn how to pray for one another yes. instead of hating on one another. Yes, yes, sir. But the only way that we can access this power is if we focus on the Lord. Yeah. Am I preaching in here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says that Paul and the Thessalonians, they prayed for one another. Somebody say they prayed for one another. But, but notice here that the primary concern of their mutual prayer was not about themselves. But the primary concern for their mutual prayers, it was about the Lord. Trying to help somebody here. Yeah. Their prayer was not about themselves. Their prayer was a focus on the Lord. Yes, because notice here, it was about the Lord who was mentioned four times in these five verses. Because 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, it teaches us three spiritual priorities that should consume our prayers for one another. Okay, here it is. The first priority that ought to consume your prayer as we pray for one another is the word of the Lord. Somebody say the word of the Lord. Somebody say the word of the Lord. Notice here with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16 through 7, it said, it said, Now may our Lord Jesus himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Somebody say word. word. Somebody say word. word. Somebody say word. word. In other words, if we're going to pray for each other, if I'm going to pray for you and you are going to pray for me, we must understand that we must know something concerning the word of God. He's in here, neighbor. He's in here. Because chapter 2 of this letter, it ends with Paul's prayer for the church at Thessalonica. Chapter 3 begins with the prayer request that he makes to the church. Look in verse 1. He says, finally, brothers, pray for us. Do you see that in your Bible? He says, finally, brothers, pray for us. Now, when Paul says pray for us, this is not something that's unique because Paul had a habit of always soliciting the prayer of the saints. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 25, he said, brothers, pray for us because Paul was considered the Gentile apostle. The Thessalonians were brand new Christians, but Paul said, even though you are new Christians, even though you have not been in the faith long, even though you may not know all the bylaws, even though you may not know the constitution, even though you may not know Robert Rusa order, even though you may not know when to shout, even though you may not know when to say amen, you are not too small to pray for me. Are you with me here? And so the Bible says here that Paul humbly requested, brothers, pray for us. Now, now notice here in the text, this request is in what we call a grammatical emphasis. 
that denotes that I don't just want you to pray for me one time. Are y'all going to help me here? Paul said, I want you to keep on praying for me. Are y'all going to help me here? Because notice here, he solicits this, their ongoing prayer. Paul example reminds us that we are never, are y'all going to help me here? We are never, somebody say never. never. We are never to reach a place where we do not need other folk to pray for us. <laughs> now, I know you don't want everybody praying for you. <laughs> but somebody do need to pray for you. Are y'all going to help me here? But Carl, let me just share something with you here. The reason why you got to be careful who you ask to pray for you is because everybody ain't praying for you to make it. Let me share that with you again. The reason why you got to be careful who you ask to pray for you because everybody don't want to see uh, brother so-and-so get any better. Are y'all going to help me here? Huh? But the prayer request also tells us that the Thessalonians needed to pray. Why? Because they were facing some difficulties for which Paul prayed that the Lord would come along and comfort them and establish them. That's why we need to pray for each other. Because let me tell you something, we may come up in here and sing and Get happy and say amen. But there's some folk in here that got some difficult days going on. You, you ain't got to say amen. I will say amen for you. And there are some folk in here, they ain't going to ask you verbally to pray for them. But you need to pray for them. Are y'all following me here this morning? Huh? Because sometimes we need to pray just as much as we need to be prayed for. That's right. That's right. Does that make sense now? See, see, this is the, this, listen, this is the irony of prayer. The heavy load you carry is often lifted as you take on the burdens of others. Preach pastor, that was deep there. The heavy burden you carry, sometimes it's going to be lifted because you take on somebody else's burden. Sometimes God will lighten your load because you trying to help lighten somebody else's load. But many times the reason why God has not lightened our load is because we trying to make somebody else's load heavy. Preach, pastor. But has it ever occurred to you that when you try to take the pressure off Pastor Mabry, God going to take the pressure off you? Okay, these young folk, can I help y'all anybody? 30 now, they, y'all call it karma. Y'all call it karma. My big mama called it what goes around, come around. <laughs> That's what she called it. And many of us right now, the reason why we're having to deal with all this karma it's because you tried to make somebody else a little heavy. But have it ever occurred to you that if you would try to help lighten somebody else's load, God going to help lighten your load. Okay, so Paul, what are we to pray for? Well, Paul said, first of all, we need to pray for the opportunity that is before us. Pray for the opportunity that is before us. Look, listen, listen. In verse 1, he said, finally, brother, pray for us that the word of the Lord, watch this here, may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you. Now notice, notice right here, this request was not so much for Paul and Silas and Timothy. It was for the word of the Lord. Paul said, I'm not praying for, for us to speed ahead. Paul said, I'm not praying for us to get on down the road. Paul said, I'm praying that the word of the Lord may speed ahead. Do you see that in your Bible? And let me just say something with you. None of us in this church are indispensable. Are y'all hearing me here? You don't believe me? Die today. And tell God to look back in here next, let you look back in here next Sunday. And see, don't the church still be going on? You are not indispensable. But guess what? Even though you are not indispensable, the word of God is. Huh? 
Because everything that we do in the church, everything in the church is rooted and grounded in the word of God. The great theologian Warren Wiseman said it like this. He said, too much Christian work these days is accomplished by human plans and promotion and not by the word of God. He said, we trust our programs and do not publish the word of God. And many times we are trying to build our churches on our own efforts instead of trying to build them on the word of God. And Paul said, I want, he said, I want to pray for the opportunity for, what are you praying for, Paul? He said, first of all, I want to pray that the word will get out. I want to pray that the word will get out. Paul asked the saints to pray that the word of the Lord may speed ahead. That word, that word, that word, that word, that word, that word that Paul uses here, it means to run. In other words, it carries the same connotation of an athletic term. Pictures of the word as a strong runner that's speeding ahead on his course. Are y'all following me here? This prayer request makes an important statement about the nature of the word. The word of God is not dead. Y'all better help me here. I ain't never saw nothing wrong this day. The word of God is not dead. It's not idle. It's not passive. The word of God is active and it is alive. It's on the move. Somebody say it's on the move. Psalm 147 and 15 says he sends out this command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. This prayer request is also a statement about the urgency that we ought to have for the progress of the word. Y'all ain't hear me here this morning. Okay. If we believe the word of God, we ought to be praying that the word will speed ahead to reach somebody in this community that's lost. I mean, listen, if you don't believe the word, you don't want nobody to say. But if you really believe the word of God, you ought to be praying that the word of God is going to get out. But not only should you pray that the word of God get out, you ought to pray that the word of God will get in. I'm going to hit by five of y'all right here. Because you do know the word can get out without getting in. It do it every Sunday. Are y'all going to help me here? Huh? You do know that the word can reach a person's ears without reaching his or her heart. That's right. That's right. Am I preaching in here? Right. So Paul said, I want you to pray that when the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored. That word honor can be translated praised or glorified. Are y'all helping me here? So Paul said, I want you to pray that the word will be honored in the city. I want you to pray that the word will be honored in our state. Paul said, I want you to pray that when the word of God is heard, it is affirmed, it is believed, and it is obeyed. And then Paul gives them a frame of reference. He said, this is how I want you to know about it. He said, because I want you to pray. He noted what he said. He said, as happened among you. Paul said, I want you to pray that the word of God does to other folk what it done to you. Y'all ain't hearing this preaching. You you remember the old church said, I I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But they said, well, I couldn't couldn't keep it to my, I I had to run and tell somebody. In other words, they wanted to share with somebody else. And let them know that I want the word of God to do to you. It's exactly what the word of God had done to me. Paul said we got to pray. Then Paul said secondly pray for the opposition that is against us. I ain't going to get through this today. Pray for the opposition that is against us. Notice notice right here in verse 1. Paul testifies about the positive response to the word of God. But then in verse 2, he talks about the negative response. Now, let me just say something with you. Anytime there's a positive, there's going to always be a negative. Are you with me here? Huh? 
But in verse, no, 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 he said, look, listen, in verse 1, Paul asked the saints, he said, pray for the proclamation of a message. But in verse 2, he says, he will ask them to not only pray for the message, but verse 2, he said, pray for the messenger. Y'all missing this right here. Y'all ain't hearing this here. In verse 1, he said, pray for the message. But in verse 2, he said, pray for the messenger. Verse 1, pray for the message. But verse 2, I need you to pray for the messenger. Because in verse 1, we see Paul's humility. But in verse 2, we see Paul's humanity. Do, do you see that in there? He asked the saint, pray for me. What do you want me to pray, Paul? That we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. Paul said that even though I'm doing the will of God, even though I'm doing the work of God, even though I'm doing what God has called me to do, I still face opposition. Am I preaching in here? And when he used that word wicked, he talking about some stubborn folk. Some unreasonable men who oppose the word. You do know everybody don't want to hear the word. Huh? So Paul said, pray. And then there's one commentator I looked at, they call them morally insane. They ain't got no kind of conscience about them. Have you met them folk? They ain't got no kind of conscience, they ain't got no filter, nothing when it comes, they care nothing about the church. I'm preaching here. Paul called them evil men, indicating that they were actively involved. They weren't just sitting around talking. They, you know, you know we, we used to come up I don't know if they say it now. We used to say, don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Y'all yeah. probably don't say that now. Young folks say something else. But don't talk about it. We tell them, be about it. Yeah. Right. These folks weren't just sitting around talking to you, but they were being about it. Huh? And this is the Pacific as Paul gets about his opposition. But we know from the record of Paul's time in Corinth that he is referring to religious folk, both outside and inside of the church, that opposed his word. Now, so it's one thing to face opposition from the outside, but it's another thing to face opposition from the inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The great theologian J. Vernon McGee, he says, I find that spreading the gospel, Reverend Connors, is hindered more by people in the church than anything else. Right. That's what he said. He said, no liquor store, no bar room, no gangsters have ever attacked me. At least I never known about it. But I have been attacked by so-called saints in the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Folk at the club, they don't bother me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. They say, hey, Rev, how you doing? Come on in. <laughs> them folks sitting out there up on them trees, drinking their stuff, they don't bother me. They say, hey, Rev, how you doing? You want one? <laughs> but most of the tax yes, that we have to deal with do not come from folk we don't know. You ain't got to say, man, y'all made me think y'all attacking some folk. <laughs> but it comes from people who we sit up in here with and know. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. But, but notice your Paul said, I ain't going to spend a lot of time talking about that. But then notice, and I got to get out of here. He talks not only about the word of the Lord, but then secondly, and I'm going to close on this, and I'll finish part two next week, he talks about the faithfulness of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can close right here. This is going to be a good point to close. He talks about the faithfulness of the Lord. Because put, put verse two up there. Because notice here, when you look at verse two, verse two in, y'all wait little Jay up back there. Put verse two up. Okay. <laughs> verse 2. Verse 2. Look what he said. He said, All men have not faith. Now put verse 3 up there. All men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful. I'm, I'm talking about the faithfulness of the Lord. All these folks sitting up in here. May not have faith, 
But in spite of who's sitting up in here in the four walls, the Lord is. He's faithful. Are y'all helping me here? And I'm just going to be honest with you. We living in a world now where loyalty is a scarce commodity. And because of that, we are often asking the question, who can, who can we trust? Every Monday, we have a segment called Chatting with the Pastors. Where there are a group of us who come together and talk about different things that are going on within our ministries. And one of the things that always comes up is that as pastors, we do not have anyone we can trust. Because many times those who are spreading the rumors, many times those who are trying to tear another preacher down, it's not someone that's sitting in the pew, but it's someone that's standing in the pulpit. But Paul said that the, in spite of who is not faithful, and Paul said that the, in spite of who does not still have faith. Paul said that the, when everybody uh, sits down on you, that the, there's someone that the, will stand with you. Do you hear me? And, uh, and all I'm trying to say this morning is that if there's somebody in this house that, uh, that may be going through and uh, you don't have no one that uh, you can depend on. Well, uh, well, Paul, yeah, wants me to tell you that uh, there is someone uh, that you can trust. Do you hear me? And uh, what well, somebody said, well, uh, well, tell me, Pastor Maybe, uh, how do you know that uh, I can trust in this man? Uh, well, uh, the reason I know that uh, I can trust in this man is uh, because my grandmama trusting in him, and uh, my granddaddy trusting in him, and uh, if they can trust in him, then uh, Surely I can trust in him too. Do you hear what I'm saying? And uh, the Paul said that uh, I'm telling you you can trust him uh, because I just told you in the word that uh, the Lord is faithful. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? And, uh, and I talked to Paul. Uh, I said, tell me now, Paul, uh, what do you mean when uh, you say that uh, the Lord is faithful? Uh, and then uh, Paul said and uh, what I'm saying is that uh, his character uh, it never changes. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? And uh, you know some people in your life uh, they this way today and uh, they another way tomorrow. Uh, you call them wishy washy and uh, you say they bipolar. Uh, but Paul said and uh, the God we serve. Uh, He's not wishy-washy. He's not bipolar. He does not have a split personality. Do you hear what I'm saying? And, and I talk to the Lord. I said, tell me now, Lord, what do you mean when you say that you don't have a split personality? The Lord said, you mean to tell me mean uh, that you my preacher uh, you don't know what I mean uh, you know what I said in uh, the word of God uh, I'm the same God uh, yesterday uh, today uh, and forevermore uh, in other words uh, with the Lord bless me uh, to see this time next year uh, the God I share uh, he'll still be the same 
Y'all know him mean. But the Lord bless Pastor Mabry to see 10 more years. The God I serve, he'll still be the same. Now some of y'all in here, you might switch up on me. You hear what I'm saying? But I'm so glad that I serve a God. And the God I serve won't switch up on me. Do you hear what I'm saying? Look at your neighbor. It's your neighbor. I'm so glad that they call to mind. He won't switch up on me. Do you hear what I'm saying? And I talked to Paul. I said, tell me now, Paul. What do you mean? You say that his character will never change. Paul said that he loved you last year. And he loved you right now. Paul Send. He had compassion on you yesterday. Got compassion on you right now. Paul said that the promises he made yesterday, those same promises are good right now. All I'm trying to tell you that if you can trust anybody, you can trust the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's somebody in this house, you need someone. Somebody in this house, you want someone that you can lean on, that you can depend on. But I've come to tell you that there's someone that you can depend on. There's someone that you can lean on. Will somebody send? Can you tell me who he is? Well, Big Mama called him uh, a bright and morning star. Uh, granddaddy called him uh, the lily of the valley. Uh, ain't he called him uh, a war hog uh, pony in the valley? Uh, and I heard somebody else call him uh, the palm uh, in Gilead. Uh, I'm trying to tell someone uh, that you can uh, depend on the Lord. But we got to learn how to pray for one another. Do you hear what I'm saying? I said we got to learn how to pray for one another. I might not be what I ought to be, but I thank my God that I'm not what I used to be. Do you hear what I'm saying? And if I'm not what you think that I ought to be, don't talk about me. But just pray for me. Do you hear what I'm saying? Look at your neighbor. Is that neighbor? Pray for me. Look at somebody else. They don't want to look at you. It's that neighbor. Don't talk about me. Don't call me anything. But I need you to pray for me. Because if you pray for me, I'm going to pray for you. I say, if you pray for me, yeah, I'm going to pray for you. And watch and see what God will do. But how God will, he'll turn things around. Do you hear what I'm saying? I come this far because somebody prayed for me. I didn't have sin to pray to myself. But I can say like a songwriter, somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took out a little time. And they prayed for me. And now I got to say that yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that somebody prayed for me. I'm so glad that somebody prayed for me. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to pray for you. 
pray for me and I'm going to pray for you. You may not be faithful, but the Lord, he's faithful. The mutual prayer. Difficult times. All I'm saying, we got to pray for each other. We don't need to be plotting on each other. We don't need to, we need to be, we don't need to be praying on each other, not P R E Y. We need to P R A Y for each other. Do you hear me? I'm serious. We got to learn how to pray for each other. Let me, let me just say. Job was we're going through. And I'm on Bible ground. Job had lost everything he had. His wife was acting a fool. Telling him, you need to go on and just cuss Job, cuss God and die. Then he had three friends. Here they come. They had more trouble to what he going through. Sit there so many days, didn't even say nothing. Brooke, you know, you, you, you got a friend, you, want, you know, if you're going through, you want to say something. Don't come sitting there looking at me. They just come there looking at Job. He going through something. They just looking at him. And then when they do say something, they don't say nothing to encourage him. They don't say nothing to try to make him feel no better. They say, Job, what you done done to God? What you done did to make God mad at you? You trying to hold on to your integrity. You done done something. But the Bible says, that when Job prayed for his friends, that God started to turn his situation around. Job didn't pray for God to take him out of what he was going through. Job started praying for his friends. And I just told you that a while ago. Could it be the reason why? That God had not lightened your load. And because you have not petitioned the throne of grace to lighten somebody else's load. I know it seems like an oxymoron. So you telling me to pray that God blesses somebody else when I need the blessing? Yes. Yes. See, God has a mathematical table that don't add up like ours do. Sometimes God deals by subtracting. Sometimes God can multiply by what? Divide. So I'm saying to you, let's learn how to pray for each other during these difficult times. Let me just say this with you too. Grandmama had not been to the theologist. Theology school, but she said, you know what? So, and, and get what? Put some legs on them prayers. I tell folk all the time, if I'm hungry, I don't need you praying for me. Feed me. You know I'm hungry. You out there? <laughs> Fill it up. I'm like, you know I'm hungry. Give me, you ain't got to give me, listen. You ain't, listen, you ain't got to give me a bomb bar. Give me a happy meal. Feed me. And many times we are praying for people when we have the answers. God answers prayer through people. And let me share something with you. We, you know, when I was growing up, every Sunday morning, we at one show gonna be on. Feed the children, feed the children. You can pray for them children all you want to. But if ain't nobody sending no money over there, ain't no food going over there, them prayers ain't being answered. I'm telling you, 
If you want to see your situation turn around, start praying for somebody else. That means you take your focus off yourself. Now your focus is on God because you're asking God to do for them what you know you can't do. The doors of the church are open. There may be somebody here today. There may be somebody here today that do not know Christ. Today is a great day for you to get to know him. If you don't know him, come on, get to know him. He's that faithful one. But God is faithful. He's faithful. And I want us to really start praying for each other. I'm serious. I want us to really, really start praying for each other. Y'all pray for me. I'm serious. I pray for y'all. Pray for me. I pray for y'all not just at 730. I pray for you. Sometimes I'm laying in the bed and I just think about y'all. I pray. I pray. Lord, keep them. Keep them strong, Lord. Keep the mind, Lord. I know they're going through something. They won't even tell me, but touch them, Lord. Let us stand. I'm so glad to see all of y'all today. That might be why I got happy. I can get happy when I see folks. You know how my, you know, growing up, you know, you show out when folk come to the house. My grandma, don't you show out, come to come. But I'm happy to see each one of y'all. I am so happy to see you all. I'm very happy to see y'all. Because I love y'all and I miss y'all. And, and we're going, we getting there. Slowly but surely. We're getting there. How are we going to get there? Through prayer. And since Colleen is getting ready for our Easter, we're going to have a great Easter service. Cheering, we're going to say these speeches and, and happy Easter day. And, and, and what, 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 we going to even, I, I want to, uh, I even want to prepare a meal that day. We, we going to have a meal that day. Amen. We, we going to have a fellowship meal that day. Amen. Our children, y'all going to be our special guests. All our children going to be our special guests on that day. Amen. I want, listen, I'm telling you what I want now so y'all can get in the oil. I want them to have a head table out there. All our children, I want them to have a head table. They're going to be our special guests. They're going to be our honorees on that day. Amen. Amen. We're going to show them that we appreciate them and the work they're done. So, amen. So, everyone, amen. Because I want that to be a great day for our young people. And we go, I'm just telling you, God is just, God is awesome. He's awesome. And, every, and listen, every time I see Brother John Dark, I show sure enough won't show my tail. <laughs> hey, man, I, I show sure, I sure enough won't show my tail when I see Brother John Dark. Hey, man, because he is a great inspiration to me now, even though he may not know it. Every time I see him, he is a great inspiration to me. Hey, Amen. And I just want to tell him to keep on doing what you're doing. Amen. 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 Let us pray, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your service. Now, God, we've heard your word. We believe your word. Now, God, help us live your word. We pray now, God, that your word not only got out, but, God, we pray that your word got in. And now, God, when we leave this place, we're going to run with speed and carry this word to a dying world. Lord, I thank you for all these who are here. We thank you for our guests on today. We ask you to bless her today, God. And God, we pray that as we depart from here, that you just continue to shower down your blessings upon us. And God, I pray now for these young people, these teachers, faculty, staff, as we get ready to go back to work on this week. We pray, God, that you continue to help them stay focused. But oh God, the end is real close. And God, I pray now for sick. I pray for shut in. Ask a special blessing, God, for Brother John Darden. That you continue to strengthen his body, keep his mind stayed on you. But God, not only him, there are others here. Sister Irene, we pray for her as well. God, just continue to keep her and strengthen her body. And God, we thank you for everything you have done and what you're doing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. We thank God again. Amen. For Jolly Chapel being in the house. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. And listen, please get your children, your grandchildren, your great grand. Get them here. Amen. Get them here. Because we got some special plan for them. We're going to lay it out that day. God bless you.